Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. We'll wait till you get on. Tell us hi. That you're on. Hi, Jackie. Rosa. Yay. Yeah, it's Wednesday night. Hey, Apostle. There's the Chicago Bishop. <laughs> the Chicago Bishop. Bishop. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Yay. I'm so excited. I am. Oh, that's so cool. Hi, Apostle Rod. Happy anniversary to Great Lakes. We're going to do this thing together, Rod, but I know we'll never even come close to you and Siobhan. You guys are like professionals, you know? They sure are. <laughs> they sure are. Chicago Deluxe Bishop. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's so good to hear from you all. We'll just give everyone still a few minutes to come on. Armando, hola. Hola, hola. Hola. Oh, man, we have a really great subject tonight to talk about. Don't we, dear? Yeah, I was, uh, I woke up about 3, 3.30 this morning, and I was just thinking about what, what we were going to talk about tonight, and and of course, last week she was saying we need to do something together. And uh, but about three thirty this morning, I've really felt uh, the Holy Spirit say to talk about bitterness. You know, and of course, bitterness, uh, forgiveness goes along with that. So uh, we're going to uh, take a shot at this tonight and and uh, go over some things. And and uh, we believe this is going to help some people. I believe that the Holy Spirit said to talk about bitterness. I believe that that uh, there's people that deal with it and uh, it's so easy to uh, uh, get bitter today uh, there's so much going on and and uh, i wrote this down it says too much internet or social media posts can have a great effect on us hmm. and uh, so with everything that's going on i mean out west we're dealing with fires of course there's nothing real close to us other than we're, we're dealing with a little smoke. But, uh, I mean, there's people in uh, Northern California and Southern California and Oregon and Washington. I mean, they're just uh, inundated with fires and, and all the stuff uh, that's going on. And, and so you take that and you deal with all the racial unrest, you deal with this pandemic and everything else. Uh, it, uh, it can really, really uh, get you down. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I believe that that uh, uh, we we uh, I just want to encourage you tonight that uh, you're going to you're going to be all right. Yes. Amen. Look, hi, Mike. It's so good hi, to Mike. see you. Stay safe up there in Oregon. Yeah, we'll be praying for you. You know, honey, I just want to uh, comment on Sunday. Um, I preached a message that I titled help. I could just hear in the spirit help and I think this is great on the heels of that to be talking about it because uh, the other um, thing that came up was overwhelming people are overwhelmed mm -hmm. and what do they do with overwhelming feelings and things like that and uh, if you if undealt feelings and processing um, really can take us down the road to forgive um, to bitterness and unforgiveness, huh? If left unchecked. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so my wife's going to open with prayer. Yay. <laughs> so, Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, I thank you for everyone that is tuning in right now and that will watch in the future. Father, we just ask that uh, for freedom, freedom to take place over the airwaves, Lord God, that if there's anything where our eyes need to be open to see 
um, see some things more clearly. We pray, Father, for the blinders to come off of our eyes. And God, we pray, Father, that we would be uh, people that will walk by the Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to help us walk out this life, not only during this season in our life, but uh, for the rest of our lives. So Lord, help us. And Lord, I ask that you would just touch Larry and my mouth and that you would bring to remembrance those things that we need to talk about that will help people in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I'm going to start in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, and uh, verse 1, it says, Therefore we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and run with endurance the race that's set before us. In the Amplified, it says, We're surrounded by such great a cloud of witnesses. Let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance unnecessary weight and the sin that so readily uh, clings to and entangles us and let us run with patient endurance the steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that's set before us and and in verse 2 it says looking unto Jesus mm. looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith in the Amplified it says looking away from all that will distract mm. and uh, I believe that that in this day uh, we really have to keep our focus on on Jesus and on the Lord and on the Holy Spirit, uh, His wisdom on how to deal with the, what we're dealing with. Because, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, uh, we're not used, we've not been used to being uh, locked down, restricted. You know, some parts of the country are more open than others. But uh, like here in California, they still got us on a big lockdown and and if you want to go to a restaurant, you have to eat outside. They're not allowed to have things inside. Uh, there's about 30 plus counties that churches can't have church inside. They're not supposed to sing, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, when you take those restrictions, you take people that aren't working. Uh, and so there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, stress and, and emotional stress on people. And uh, you've got to be careful that you don't become bitter. I believe that we should become better. I believe as what we're going through here, we can, all can become better. It can build character in us. It can build integrity in us. It can build strength and faith in us. So we should be getting better and not bitter. And uh, we got to work at that. I mean, we got to work at it. There's there's days that, uh, uh, you know, our governor will have uh, uh, press conferences and I've got to turn it off because I'll just go, come on, man, you know, hello. Yeah, because things will end up coming out of our mouth that we regret and that's really not us, but you can just get so upset. And, uh, you know, when you don't deal with these things that upset with us, if you don't take it to the Lord, um, it comes out sideways, doesn't it, dear? Yep. Like it, it comes out um, to one another, especially our spouses. Uh, and maybe children, uh, those of you that may have young children, you'll, you'll find yourself yelling or, um, you know, they, they, they could have just moved a pillow and you could be, ah, you know, well, they just moved a pillow. What is the big deal? Mm -hmm. You see? So I think that, um, uh, we have to be aware when we hold things in and don't take it to Jesus and pray and stop, we're going to hurt people. You know, we are hurting. And what's the old adage? Hurt people, hurt people. Hurt hurt people. people. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's no different. And let me say this too, that this is the Christian life. If we're going to make disciples, this is the Christian life. We're, we're going to get hurt. We're going to get persecuted. We are going to be talked about. We are going to be betrayed. We are going to be misunderstood. We Injustice will happen to us all. You know, it, it all happens to us. It's part of uh, living the uh, Christian walk. And as long as we're on this earth, uh, we just need tools and to know how to um, overcome this, huh? Right. Because it affects us all. Yeah, yeah leaders... Leaders especially, I know you, you talk about this, you'll say, you'll hear a certain leader uh, preaching. This was 
oh my goodness, probably 18 years ago, something like that, and you go, ah, that bitterness got in them, listen to that preaching, it's coming out. And, uh, and so right then we were like, oh Lord, help us, because it could happen to any one of us. Amen? And the good thing for that leader was that somebody uh, got next to him and, and worked with him and helped him and he worked through the problem and came back and, and was very profitable to, to the body of Christ. So yes. we thank God for that. Amen. Yes. There's always repentance and forgiveness. <laughs> yes. So in uh, Hebrews 12, let's jump down to verse 12. Uh, first, he talks a, bit, a little bit, a ver few verses before that about the chastening of the Lord. The Lord chastens those he loves. And so I believe that what we're going through now, uh, for some people, it can be a chastening where it causes us to take a look at what we're doing and how we're doing it. And maybe we'll sharpen up and, and uh, get things back the way they need to be. But it says, verse 12, it says, Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may, be dis may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Mm -hmm. Pursue peace with all people and holiness which without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. The, the Amplified says, exercise foresight and be on the watch to look out after one another to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace his unmerited merited favor and spiritual blessing in order that no root of resentment rancor bitterness or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment and that many become contaminated and defiled by it and so rancor means bitter being vindictive malice Malice means to cause pain, injury, distress to another. And, and so uh, we can see how this comes and acts out. Uh, they say there's more suicides now. I mean, you start reading where, you know, whole families have been wiped out. You know, people just aren't handling this very well. But we as Christians should be able to handle it because we have Jesus. We have the greater one inside of us. Amen. And so we really, we really need to uh, be careful you know, take heed to ourselves. You know, Jesus said offenses would come and things will come that can offend us, that can affect us, but take heed to yourself, okay? Because most of the time what happens if somebody offends us right away, we're looking at shame on you. You've done this, you know, and, and we're the ones pointing the finger, but it mm. says take heed to yourself, okay? Yes. We have to watch ourselves, you know, like she was just saying, before we got on about, you know, the scripture that says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And, um, he's used to preaching and preaching and preaching, <laughs> but, uh, oh Lord, don't let me forget. Um, but it will manifest in, in different ways. I know we talked about that earlier. Um, Anyway, so go ahead. Sorry. And, and so uh, bitterness defined as anger, disappointment at being treated unfairly or resentment because of things that happen. And so sometimes oh, it's, it's in general the way things are happening. It's like, you know, the way some, some uh, uh, counties, some governors, uh, some mayors of cities are, are dealing with things. You, you, you can get resentful if you don't watch your heart. Amen. And uh, the fact of the matter is uh, we need to be praying for them because they need help. Amen. You know who else you can get resentful for is like your job. Yeah. You know, because some people have been laid off. Um, you can get resentful um, to the educators who have no control. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just really have to guard your heart. I think you're going to hear that several times throughout this. Yeah. Yeah. So God bless the teachers. Yes. God bless the teachers. And all the Yay, ones that work Lucretia! in education. Yes. And you, you know, can I just say some of the synonyms of bitterness is um, you become cynical, you're harsh, cold, relentless, unpleasant to be around not walking in the spirit. The thing is, is when we 
get that um, bitterness, that hurt down in us. I know what I was going to say. When we rehearse it over and over and we talk about it, you know, like confession is good for the soul. It's the same thing with confessing our hurts over and over. It, it just begins to take root. Now, that is not a good confession, right? Our ice maker's going funny, honey. So, um, you know, unpleasant to be around. I've, I've seen this, I've heard of this with older people. You know, they've been through a lot. Careful, careful on the old people. You know, and um, life took a toll and they just become harsh and critical. And I, I do know that they become truthful, more truthful. They'll speak the truth and don't care, but I'm no, not talking about no that. No filter. <laughs> yeah, no filter. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ones, you know, that are so mean to the waitress, waiter, waiters, things like that. You know, they'll just be snippy, you know, and, um, or to the, uh, you know, anybody. And it's like, listen, it's coming out. It comes out. Yeah. Yeah. So if, when these things are left unchecked, you know, I think sometimes we think, okay, well, I won't talk about it. Well, you're supposed to talk about it to the Lord. That's where your help comes from. Right, yes, dear? Right. That's where you have to release it. That's who you talk to. So you should be talking more to Jesus about your resentment and the hurts and, you know, Lord, help me forgive that person. And you know what? You're probably very justified. I'm sure you got hurt. Yep. It can be real. We've been there, huh, honey? Oh, yeah. Let me give you some characteristics of bitter people of how they act. Uh, they're usually bitter to one or multiple experiences, and they're usually not anger with one person that wronged them, but usually groups of people. So it can be against men, women. It can be against, against boss, authority figures. can be against church leaders if... If they they feel they got hurt in a church, okay, and so uh, uh, they may think that everyone's out to get them, and they they have a lot of mistrust. They don't trust people, okay, and, and they judge someone or a situation without try out try with without trying mm -hmm. to understand the circumstances. Amen. They only see yeah. it from their side, and uh, they tend to hold grudges. Uh, they're angry at things that are normally cleared up or forgotten by others, okay? Everyone else has moved on, but they're still holding on to that, and they can't let it go. They like to talk about what happened to them, but go. they don't talk about how are you. They don't ask how you are. They're talking about what happened to them because they're, they're, they're focused on the wrong thing. And what you focus on, you empower. If you focus on the negative and never look at anything positive in your life, it will mess you up and mess you up big time. That's Hallelujah. Good. Amen. They can be jealous of, of what good things or what promotion comes to other people. They seldom take steps to change for themselves, but they want to blame everybody else for what's going on around them. They usually try to seek attention, but they want sympathy for what they feel is justified. If you don't, if you don't agree with them, you know they'll probably get upset with you. They struggle to accept advice. You try to give helpful advice, they go on the defensive. It's like no, 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 no. You have to understand my thing. And so the Bible says what? There's safety in the multitude of counselors. And sometimes we need counsel because we're not seeing things right. Amen. You know, the, I, I like that um, because you said one thing in there about seeing the bigger picture um, and seeing it from their perspective, I tell you what that is, that takes maturity and that takes a willingness to really want to be healed, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, cause you want to make your side so right. Oh, and, but if you really want healed in the relationship, 
you have to look at it from the other person's perspective. Maybe their past, maybe something, um, maybe you represent someone to them that hurt them. You know, it can go on and on, can mm -hmm. it, honey? Right. Yeah. And they usually have an inability to see those in their lives who really do care about them and are trying to help them. Boy. They can't see that. And they don't like cheerful or happy people. <laughs> They avoid them, okay? And the Bible says what? Laughter does good like a medicine. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the last but not least, they become loners and they isolate themselves with just magnify the issues and the problems, you know? Oh, that's not good to you be know? alone. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, if you try to separate yourself and isolate yourself, then you start thinking certain things and your mind runs. That's why, you know, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. You know, some people get hurt, or they start feeling something, and, and one of the first things the enemy wants to do is, is says, well, don't go to church, stay away from those people. They don't understand you. Nobody knows what you've been through. And the fact of the matter is, you know, you need to be around other people. You need to yeah. hang out with other people, other Christians that can help you. And if you need help, you need to reach out to someone and say, man, I'm dealing with this. I, I'm, uh, this thing is starting to take a toll on me. Yeah. Amen? And, and I mean, there's times that you just got to, you just got to kind of uh, unload, you know, and I don't mean by ripping somebody or getting into somebody, you know, I mean, you just need to dump it, cast all your yes. care on the Lord because he cares for you. Amen. Yes. I mean, there's times when you stop and you think about everything that's going on and the things we can't do, the places we can't go and, and all of that. And, and you go, man, this is, this can be overwhelming, but what you have to do is take it a day at a time. Yes. Just deal with today, yes. okay? I'm going to get through today. I'm going to make the best of it, okay? And and so you do what you need to do to 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 continue to move forward. You know, yeah. get a good cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee and <laughs> and move forward. Well, you know um, about needing each other. Uh, I'm sure your spouse, if you are married, has heard it all. You know. And um, that's where it says, confess your faults one to another that you might be healed. Yeah. So you really do need to find a good friend that will tell you the truth and pray for you. Um, that, that is really helpful. It's okay to confess uh, to your spouse. And, um, you know, oftentimes I kind of hold things in. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. Really, it has to be super big for me to be offended and then work things out. But I'll now behave. And um, oh, I'm, laughing. I'm laughing at Lucretia. That's no, don't do Duncan. <laughs> don't do Duncan. Oh my gosh. But um, you know, there comes a point where your spouse is tired of hearing it as well. And so you, you need, you really need to seek out and have that confidant to help. Uh, get you free and walk you through it and please listen to the advice I think that was one of the ones that, that they think that they're right mm -hmm. so you have to be willing to hear truth truth hurts I I have found this year since the beginning of the year that that very thing that you always say is what offends you first is the very thing that could liberate you so watch when you are getting offended. It could be something that is trying to set you free. Now that sounds kind of funny, but it is true because like if, if the truth comes like Marla, you need to forgive. Well, no, I don't want to. I, I want to hold on to this, you know, a little bit more. No, you're, you're not going to be happy if you don't forgive. <laughs> And we're, we're going to give you steps to forgiveness. Um, let, let me just say this, that um, I know years ago, y'all know John Bevere. He's written many, many books. And uh, he had a situation in his church that um, he was on staff and his lead apostle at the time, lead pastor, you know, he, he began to say, oh, I'm not getting anything from him. I don't, I'm not receiving anything from him. And so he left the church and um, uh, it was a church hurt. Mm -hmm. And so he's sitting 
at this other church and, and the Holy Spirit says, what are you doing here? I'm paraphrasing, I'm making it quick because we have other points to do. And um, he said, you know, what are you doing? I never told you to leave there. And so he, um, he said, oh, and he realized that he needed to go back because he had had unforgiveness in his heart, right? And he was building it up and building it up. So therefore he wasn't receiving from the leader. I, I just really feel by the Holy Spirit though that this is ministering to marriages right now. Like you're holding things in and you're wondering why you can't be intimate and why you can't communicate and things like that. You're, you're holding too much in and you, you need to uh, uh, release it and get it out and ask for forgiveness from one another. Please get, get that freedom. So uh, back to John Bevere, that was a major destiny decision for him. He believes that if he did not go back um, to, uh, look at me. Hi. What? No, you're talking. I'm, to, I'm, getting, I'm getting something. I know right you now. are. I know you are, but no, I want to look is, at you. This is what Rod and Siobhan do. So it, it, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're us. We are us. Um, that he believes that if he did not do that, his destiny would completely have been thwarted. We would not even know who John Bevere is to this day. Or greatly so, delayed. Or greatly, de boy, that's a good point. You know, so unforgiveness and bitterness is a big deal. I know in my life, I had to deal with some certain things. You had to deal with things. Because it's one other thing to tell somebody to move forward. Well, you got to move forward, but still deal with your stuff. Right? Yep. You know, you, you just can't move forward and ignore it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, it affects your destiny. You will get stuck. And I want everyone to fulfill their destiny and purpose. And um, so, so, those are sidetracks that the enemy uses. And trust me. He will do it at the most opportune time. Maybe when you're just getting ready to be successful, he'll try to trip you up and get you upset with someone so that you'll, you know, thwart it and so on. But I pray for grace for us all that we will walk in our destiny and we will choose forgiveness. Amen. Hmm. All right, let's jump over to Matthew 18 and verse uh, 21. Uh, and of course, uh, it says, Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he began to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. They say that could have been $10 million. Okay. Wow. But he, he was not able to pay his master command to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him his debt. Okay, that's what Jesus has done to us. He's forgiven us any debt. Okay, he paid the price for us. It says, but the servant went out, found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, about 20 bucks, okay? And he laid hands on him, took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So the fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but, but went and threw him into the prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry, delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses or the offenses. And so, you know, we, we have to realize that, you know, we all deal with this, okay? I mean, you can't go through life and things have, not, things have happened, some things worse than others, 
but you have to move beyond it. You've got to get over it. You've got to work through it. It's a process. It takes time. And what we're going through now with all this other stuff that's just added pressure, okay, you know, think, like my wife said, things are coming out sideways. And so you really, really have to work at it and keep things moving, okay? You can get discouraged, okay? I mean, as we look at this whole thing with, with uh, uh, you know, church meeting and stuff like that, we don't know what the future holds. We don't know how it's going to work out, but I know it's going to be okay, okay? We're going to get through this thing, and we're going to kind of come out the other side, and we're going to win, amen? Hallelujah. Yeah, I think, you know, anger is a fruit of bitterness. That's a bad fruit, just as much as peace, um, you know, your talk will will be um, happy and, uh, you know, you'll have kindness off of your mouth. That's a fruit, right? Well, yeah, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. Mm. So it doesn't mean that, that you won't get angry about something, but what do you do with it? Okay. Yes. You know, do you start yelling at someone? You start throwing pillows at the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do you, you get angry and stay home and you don't go to church? You know, you 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 uh, defriend somebody. You know, over some little incident. You know, and generally it's without even talking to them. And many times, some things that that people misunderstand. Okay. Sometimes we have an ex expectation mm -hmm. that we want someone to do something a certain way, and sometimes they don't do it. And, and many times we don't look at why didn't they do it or maybe they couldn't do it, okay? Mm -hmm. And so you never know. And, and so you'll, you will pass judgment on them and hold them uh, accountable for something that we should release and let it go. And usually it's over, usually too many, let me say this, too many times it's over little petty things that have nothing to do with nothing. It really doesn't change the course of history. It doesn't change anything. Now there are other things people have gone through you know, abuse and things like that. I'm not talking about yeah. that. Those things are traumatic, okay? And and you've got to deal with them and work through them. And so, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, that is a very good point, honey, because like in marriage, let's go to marriage. Um, I know whenever you do vows, sometimes for people, you'll, you'll do the little joke of, okay, so what if she, um, he, uh, she rolls up the toothpaste or doesn't put the cap on and things like that. Yeah, 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 I'm telling on myself. But, you know, there's there's the thing that in COVID, I want the toaster put away every day. And he's like, can't you just keep the toaster out? And I'm like, no, I want my kitchen pretty every day. <laughs> and so is that something that is going to make a make or break a relationship no that's the kind of pettiness that as you get older it's it's unfortunate sometimes when we're younger we don't see that things are a big deal are a big deal mm -hmm. you know and then uh, yeah with age comes wisdom i guess and um you know, so just learn from us, okay? It's no big deal. It's no big deal if, um, you know, I don't know what all you guys deal with as far as petty issues and your preferences, but um, it's not It's not worth getting hurt and holding it up and then, nah, I'm not going to kiss you today, you know? You, if you have the toothpaste issue, it's real simple. You buy two tubes she has one and you have one and you can do amen you know if she wants to squeeze it in the middle and not put the cap on it's up to her that's her thing okay <laughs> yes you know? and and if you want to roll it from the end and keep it nice and neat keep the cap on keep it from drying out you can do that okay <laughs> it's real simple and you go well that's two tubes of t toothpaste well if you're both Who using cares? one it's still going to be the same amount all right you yeah. see what i'm saying it, yeah it's not a big deal not a big deal, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, oh, what is that? Don't mix peen the peanut butter knife with the jelly knife. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's a good one, Joe. <laughs> that's yeah, that's not good. But see, that's not gonna make or break you. You know, yeah. it really isn't. Yep. Mm -hmm. Take a napkin or a paper towel and you wipe the knife off before you put it 
into the jam or the peanut butter, whatever yep, one. Simple yep. solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have some other points about forgiveness. And what's interesting is this, this I, I purposely took this from the website of the Mayo Clinic, okay? Yeah. This is what they're saying about unforgiveness from a health point of view, hmm. okay? And, and so this is from a medical point of view, okay? And it, it says, uh, but if you don't practice forgiveness, you might be the one who pays most dearly. By embracing forgiveness, you can also embrace peace, hope, gratitude, and joy. Hmm. That's from the Mayo Clinic. We know that's what the Bible says. Right. But that's from the Mayo Clinic. I mean, it can affect you and affect you big time. Amen? And, and so there's, you know, there's, there's days that, that uh, like I said, you know, you're, you're watching TV and, you, and we get officials that go on there. And if something comes up in you, you got you to gotta let it go, man. You got to let it go. Uh, they say forgiveness means different things to different people. It involves mm. a decision to let go of resentment and thoughts of revenge. Ooh. See? Revenge. Revenge. People, you know, when you get when you get bitter, then what happens is, you know, it's not like you're just upset at someone. You want to get back at them, okay? And that's why you you'll talk bad about them, you'll you'll say things about them based off of one incident that you had with them that doesn't doesn't mean their whole life is that way. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wow. They say forgiveness can even lead to feelings of understanding, empathy, and compassion for the one who hurts you. Empathy is, for others, is the action of understanding, being aware of, and sensitive to the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of others. See, sometimes you've got to look at it from the other point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened? Why you know, sometimes we just look at it, well, they, you know, they, they didn't respect me because they didn't do what I asked them to do. Maybe they weren't able to do it. Maybe something came up, okay? And so you just got to, you got to really deal with that kind of thing, you know? Uh, last week I had someone that, that uh, I ran into and, and they were, they came and said, hey, uh, you know, I have a question. And they were asking me a question of something that supposedly happened three, four years ago, something like that. You know, they said two years, and I think it was more like three or four. And uh, they said they had asked me to do something for them, and and I uh, said I never did it, and whatever. And I said, well, I don't remember. I said, you know what, I'm really sorry. I said, I don't remember what happened. I don't know what took place. I said, I don't even remember remember the, the whole deal. And and I said, so I said, you know, I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. And And their response was, you need to repent. I said, no, you need to forgive, you know? And they were like, no, they didn't want to hear about it. And so it's like, sorry, you know, so I pray that God touches them. You know, in that situation, there's some mental issues going on. And so think about that, folks. Uh, if you want to avoid mental torment mm -hmm. and mental issues, forgiveness is your key. You know, make it a lifestyle habit to forgive every day. You, you have to. Even if you don't feel it, just say it. And yeah. it will begin to work kindness in you. Like, I forgive that person. Because you, you have to work at this thing. Um, amen. Well, it's like, it's like in Matthew 18 where we're reading about, you know, because they didn't forgive... They were turned over to the torturers and the tormentors, okay? Yeah. And sometimes that mental thing, if you hold on to bitterness, anger, and it turns into a root of bitterness, and it can, it can open you up to demonic stuff, mm -hmm. okay? And really cause you lots of problems. It sure can. But they say here there's, you know, benefits of forgiving. You can have healthier relationships. Now, I would add this. You can have relationships, mm -hmm. Okay, because mm -hmm. yeah. you can get so bitter that you nobody wants to be around you. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, improved mental health, yeah, uh, less anxiety, stress, and hostility. Uh, you won't have road rage. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, you, you see on the news where, you know, someone walks into a Walmart and they say, I'm sorry, you have to put a face mask on and they flip out. Mm. They, they have a meltdown over a face mask. That tells you, you yeah. might have some problems, yeah. okay? They've been building it up, They, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness can lower your blood pressure. Fewer wow. symptoms of depression. A stronger immune system, you know? We need a strong immune system right now. Improved heart health and improved self-esteem. Hallelujah, that's good, amen? Mm. I like the self-esteem. I yeah. didn't know that one. Yeah, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you hold on to it, it causes anger, bitterness in every relationship. You become so wrapped up in the wrong, you can't enjoy the present. Hmm. You can't enjoy the present. And, and so you, you go through life and it's like, you know, you're dragging this trash can behind you. You know, and I, you, I don't understand what, what's this weight I'm carrying. You got to let go of it. You got to let go. Hallelujah. You, you can become depressed or anxious. You feel that your life lacks meaning or purpose. Hallelujah. Yeah, we should probably hurry up, honey. Yep. Well, how about the process of forgiving? Um, let's go through that. Go ahead. Well, I know for me, like I've given you a couple tips throughout this conversation, you know, every day and checking my heart, guard, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. And um, one thing that has always convicted me is how the, the scripture that says, how can um, uh, bitter and sweet flow out of the same mouth? And um, if you're going to prophesy, if you're going to preach, you know, um, or if, you know, minister to your family, I'm, I'm just not talking about pulpit ministry, um, out of your, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And so um, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to forgive them and uh, see the bigger picture. We've given that point. And I, I just wanna stop here a moment, a moment on the process uh, because it says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Yes, that is true, but there's still a process to it. Like, like if something major has happened, I hate it. I'm sorry I use the word hate, but I hate it when people say, Get over it. It's like, I, I have to work through that. And God is big enough, and he knows the scripture of don't let the sun go down in your wrath. Like, I'm not going to be angry about it. I, I'll probably, you know, just going to be, God, help me get over this. I need you. And, um, and then through the process of time, uh, eventually... You know, like there could even be an altar call and you receive prayer and it just breaks. Like, wow, I, I can't believe this. Mm -hmm. Or how about like going to the person and talking to them as long as they know that they hurt you or that there's something. Because you always have taught us, don't go up to someone and say, hey, you know, you hurt me, blah, blah, blah. And they have no idea. And it kind of causes more confusion. Yep than anything uh confusion for them um so be careful about approaching others only know if they were in it and um so have wisdom with all of that so i just want to say it takes a process uh you know i had a relative of mine and um she was divorced and really really hurt and I see a lot of divorcees, you know, they're really, really hurt. And um, it hurts. It's legitimate. It's uh, very unkind. And um, uh, that I said to this person, I said, you know, I believe that you're going to get remarried. And so, oh, I don't know about that, you know. And uh, I said, well, just give yourself some time. Because out of the mouth then said, well, you know, like, I can't stand him. And 
I, I don't think I could ever forgive him. Well, she did. And now she's married. Yay. So isn't that cool? You know, the fruit of forgiving. You don't ever, it puts you in a jail, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It locks you up. And forgiveness is a choice. And it's a process. Okay. And, and uh, you, you know, you, you have to recognize the power of forgiveness. Hmm. Uh, there's some good books written and articles you can see read from Christians that, that talk about forgiveness and how they walk through it. And so you may need to get something like that and read it because it, it, you're locked in jail tonight. You know, you're not free, but God wants to set you free, okay? Mm -hmm. And maybe all this stuff from the COVID and everything else is just bringing stuff to the surface. Well, because mm -hmm. God wants to liberate you. He wants to set you free. And so you have to recognize the, the, the power of forgiveness, you know, and, and uh, walk through it. You, know, you may have to identify what needs healing and who do you need to forgive? Mm. Who do you need to forgive? Generally, it's people that are close to you, but it can be other people. It can be someone else. Like my wife said, you know, someone you could have watched somebody on TV and and somebody preached something or, or you heard a politician saying something and, and, and you got angry at them and it's like you don't have to call them up. They don't even know about it. But you have to deal with it in your own heart, okay? Yes. You may need to get counseling, okay? Mm -hmm. You may need some counseling to deal with it, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. You know what, dear? I feel the Holy Spirit, don't you? Mm -hmm. Um. When I think of Jesus on the cross and whenever he said, Father, forgive them for they know not mm -hmm. what they do. Yep. There, Jesus was in so much pain. He's taking all our sin on the cross and, and he's, he was able to forgive. And he is our example. And if he can forgive, we can forgive. Mm -hmm. right. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. There is an anointing that will break us out of our jail tonight. Just receive it. Receive that. I, I pray even as you go to sleep and um, maybe even processing some of the things that you've gone through or, or whatever. And just, just say, Lord, you know, give me the grace to forgive. Help me to release these people so I can be free. Yeah. Oh, my Jesus, Jesus, the presence of the Lord is here. Mm. So we pray that the Spirit of God mm. would touch you. And, uh, wow. you know, as we've been sharing tonight, maybe it's brought things up, brought things to the surface where you've, you've thought of someone that has hurt you. And, and it's a choice. It's a decision that you make. And you may need to say their name and say, say I choose to forgive. And uh, even in little things, sometimes you've got to go back and do it over and over again, you know, and, and let the process take, take its course and, and work through the things you need to work through. And, and, it, is, and it doesn't mean that, that you have to be best friends again, you know. <laughs> it, just because you forgive someone doesn't mean that you're going to be reconciled to them. But you need to forgive because it releases you. It yeah. releases you. And, uh, and so, you know, the, you can, uh, I remember a story, uh, there was a lady minister and she had been part of a, a church and, and, uh, she had some issues with, with one of the leaders and, and they parted company and it wasn't good. And, and years later, she happened to be asked to go speak at a conference. And, and when she got on the platform, they had all the speakers sitting on the platform and she's sitting on the platform and who comes in and sits beside her? the former pastor that she was under that she had the issue with. And she thought, oh, really, this is great. Mm. And, and then they broke for lunch, and so they went to lunch, and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go over to him, and I want you to apologize. I want you to ask him for forgiveness. And she said, okay. So she went over, and she says, can I see you for a moment? And they stepped out of the room to a, more of a private place, and she said, I'm really sorry for what happened, and I want you to forgive me. And and, uh, you know, uh, and she's waiting for him to go, well, I'm sorry, too. And he came back with, well, it's about time, <laughs> you know. And she said she wanted to flesh out mm -hmm. and repent later, you know. Yeah. And she, she, she turned around, walked away from that, and she goes, thanks, Lord. That was really good. And he says, no, I told you to f 
ask him to forgive you. I'll deal with him. And see, just because someone doesn't want to admit any wrong in it or anything else, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. That's their deal, okay? But it lets you out of jail. It releases you so that you have the freedom, amen? And, and I believe that God wants to release people so in this time, in these times that are stressful and, and, and restrictive and everything else, that you can have a smile on your face and you can have joy. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? Amen. I mean, I find myself getting up in the morning some, sometimes and I'm saying, man, this is another day. Boy, what are we going to do today? You know, and there isn't much to do, but it's like, <laughs> enjoy life. Amen. Enjoy life, you know. Go to the grocery store and buy some groceries. Do something, mm -hmm. okay? You know, go to Costco, whatever. You know, call a friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, We're really having a good time, huh? <laughs> Yeah, we are. It's good. Yeah, it's she's good. cooking. Yay! Glory. <laughs> Someone years ago told me, a way to a man's heart is by food. <laughs> she's she's teaching that to the ladies. Like, you know, if you want to catch a man, cook. <laughs> yeah, cook. Yeah. yeah you so. know, I want to say something more about the process that I feel like someone is saying, well, I have forgiven and I feel it. Yes, I have felt that. I have felt the forgiveness wash over me and everything else. And then I'll go to a familiar place where something happened or something was said, you know, just driving by. And it's like, what? What's, what's going on with that? And so I, I realize, you know, how far I came with it. You know, that's a good thing. But it, it's like, Lord, I just continue to give it. I continue to give it over to you. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. And um, he loves people and he loves those that have offended us. And he wants them to get saved. And, you know, just think about how you were before you got saved. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, I, I you know... I wasn't always the kindest person. <laughs> I mean, I love people, but um, yeah, just very different when you have the Spirit of God living inside of you, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So I pray that our relationships will get stronger and um, we will be able to forgive faster. You know, that's one of the signs of maturity. Mm-hmm. Uh, of being a Christian is how soon you can forgive. How fast you can get over an issue, you know. Yeah. And uh, another thing, sometimes is you got to look at it, like I said, from the other the other person's point of view. How, how put yourself in their shoes. Mm. But also, we have to look at ourselves and go, how many times have we messed up, or we offended someone, whatever, and and somebody forgave you, so you need to Jesus, forgive. You need to yes. let go. Amen. And forgive God. Right. Don't be mad at God. Don't be mad at God him. God didn't cause this problem. Yeah. But he's going to see us through it. You know? Mm -hmm. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus come, came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I pray mm -hmm. for the peace of God to rest on you. I pray that if, if you've got unforgiveness that's, that you need to deal with, that God, by his grace, is going to enable you to get through it. Okay, and do what you need to do, you know, get a book, get counseling, whatever, to work through it because it's going to change your life. You know, you've been living under this thing and if it's been like a dark cloud that's been just haunting you, mm -hmm. you need release from it. God wants to release you from it. He wants you to be free and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. And vengeance is mine, says the Lord. See, some people go, well, I want vengeance. It's not up to us to get the vengeance. Leave it up to God, okay? Mm -hmm. And thank God for his grace on us, so why don't we allow some grace on some other people? Just because they didn't do something right or did something different than what we wanted, you know, allow God to deal with them and, and let his grace save them, transform them, make them into a better person so it doesn't happen to anyone else. Amen? Amen. That's right. One more thing, honey. Um, I just heard the Lord say something about bones. That if you forgive, 
I'm going to heal um, these bones in your body. I don't know whether that's for one person watching or who will watch in the future, but I feel like, oh, so, um, it has everything to do with arthritis. Uh, it's in the bones with, yeah. So just, just make it an effort this week to forgive. Um, like he said, you might need to say the names, maybe make a list, you know, so on and so forth. But I just hopefully speak, it won't be too long. Yeah, I just speak <laughs> healing over those bones and over arthritis right now, that there would be complete healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. And uh, you can see us again on YouTube on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Bless you. Amen. That was really good, dear. That was see. I think it is really good. Is it done? I hope so. Oh, it's